Hello and happy Saturday, everyone. Happy Saturday. I'm getting logged in now. We still have about a couple of more minutes. I'm getting logged in on Instagram. We're going to go live today on Instagram as well as YouTube. So happy Saturday to y'all. Um, let me, I always try to get on here early and have enough time to, um, and just try to have enough time, but I am, I am on. So hello, hello, Miss Kia. Thank you for joining us. So I'm, I'm about to get started in just a second. If I can learn how to type right, I will get started here. Um, so give me just a second because we are both on YouTube as well as Instagram. Um, if you know somebody who needs to hear this, go ahead and like and share and uh, just invite them over. I wanted to go impromptu uh, live last night. Hello, Miss Viv. How are you? Thanks for joining. Um, I wanted to go live last night, but I'm thinking, you know, I need to start getting to bedtime uh, and stop going to bed late. That's probably why I'm tired all the time because I need to go to bed on time. And I knew that most most people would probably be in the bed. Need to start eight. Okay, so while we are prepping, it is now twelve o'clock. Okay, and what I wanted to do, um, what I wanted to really talk about today is just some alternatives that we can do to start gardening without feeling not only overwhelmed, but frustrated. Um, because I, I get a few DMs, um, I still get a few emails, and I think a lot of people are just, I don't know if it's just frustration. Uh, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to offer you some alternatives that I took. I'm gonna get myself together, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna offer you some alternatives that I took that could, I want to be able to, to help you just make gardening like a happy place. So again, thank you all for joining me. My name is Ayana of Southern Entertaining. We garden organically, and I want to be able to help those who want to garden or who have started gardening to also go ahead and just stop imagining, stop saying you're going to do it, and just do it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to start a garden. But I wanted to do this live today because we're still getting a lot of feedback about uh, not being able to grow or just not being able to keep anything alive. So I just wanted to offer y'all a few alternatives that I want you to try this gardening season. I know a lot of you still may have snow. I have been looking at uh, some areas of garden friends online that they are just like the snow is down. It's beautiful, but it looks very, very cold. It's really nice here today in coastal Georgia, but the wind, that's why I'm not outside. The wind is not playing around today. So you may hear a bunch of blowing. You may hear my wind chime outside. But uh, yeah, the wind is, is really heavy here um, today. So we're just going to do it inside. And we're just going to talk about some ways to start gardening, but without feeling overwhelmed. So if you have not gotten the free ebook five tips to flourish and garden I, I really encourage you to do that because these are just foundations that you need to know and to have before you get started like every single time no matter where i travel in the world i use these five foundations that's another way that you're not going to get overwhelmed and then um, it'll also help you decide where to even put your garden at like these are things that you have to think about but let's get to the subject at hand so this garden season for all of you out there who are just i don't want you to get discouraged because again i don't want gardening to turn into a chore for you i want this to be 
a feeling that you can't wait to get outside. You can't wait to go check on your garden. Like you want to see what's going on. You want to look at the amazement of how one seed just can turn into something so beautiful. Like that's the feeling I want to, I want all of you to have. I don't want you to think that this is a, just another chore that you wish you never started. That's not what gardening is supposed to be. To me and everybody will have a different view of gardening, but it's supposed to be able to relax you, to calm you. You just look outside no matter what's going on in the world and you just see beauty all around you. That's what I want the feeling. That's what I want people to have that feeling. I don't want you to be like, oh gosh, I got to go out here and, you know, weed or I got to go out here and water. Like if you go out and weed and water, soak up, soak up the beauty, soak up what you've accomplished by growing. A lot of people DM me or email me because they were getting so frustrated because the plants were dying. And I don't want you to get frustrated on that too. And I'll tell y'all, so much again and again put it in your mind i'm not trying to be discouraging but you're going to have plants that do not make it they're not going to make it it's nothing that you did um it just depends on a lot of factors but i don't want you to say the plant has died so i'm just not going to grow anymore i don't want you to do that i want you to continue to learn because gardening is a journey i'm still learning as i go every single day but it's a good feeling so I don't want to hold y'all on too long, but I just want to offer you some tips. And again, if y'all want to real quick, before I get into the tips, if you want to be notified every time I go live, text let's grow L E T S G R O W to 47, 47, 47. So text let's grow to 47, 47, 47. Um, I'll text you when I'm about to go live so you don't miss anything. Also, when we have giveaways, when we have freebies, when we just have a lot of new stuff going on to the, in the gardening season, you'll just receive a text that we're going live or we have a special or we're doing a giveaway um, because I don't know about you, but I don't check my email all day, every day. I will not even disclose to y'all how many email, unread emails I have. It's really sad. Um, the amount of unread emails I have, and I should be ashamed of myself, but I do go in and filter out the ones that stick out and stand out to me. So if you want to know when we're going live, when we're doing giveaways, when we're doing specials, just text, let's grow to 474747. Okay, so now after you've downloaded the five free tips to a flourishing garden, this is totally free. The link is in my bio on Instagram. And for all of my YouTube family, I always, every time I put out a video, I try to put that link in so that you can also download it for free if you have not downloaded it already. But what I want us all to do who are new to gardening so that you don't get overwhelmed, so that you don't get frustrated, what I want you to do this garden season is I want you to pick one to two plants that you want to grow. And, and I'm, I'm talking to the gardeners that are like brand new or who have started in the past and stopped because they became frustrated. So I want you to pick one to two plants that you want to grow this gardening season. And then what I want you to do, and a lot of people say, well, what, what should I grow? I can't tell you what to grow. What I always like to tell people is grow something that you like. If you like strawberries, grow strawberries. If you like to use herbs in your cooking, pick you one of your favorite herbs to grow. If you uh, love flowers, like bringing in fresh flowers, just pick something that you like. Because again, this is not supposed to be a chore. This is supposed to be just a way to soak in the beauty and enjoy and enjoy nature. So if you like carrots, you know, pick carrots. So just pick one to two, and I'm going to say one to two. Two would be great, but one to two things that you want to grow. Okay, so after you have that, then I want you to decide. Um, I always like to tell people, if you can, to give it a try so that you don't get discouraged or overwhelmed, 
grow it in a container, maybe for the first season, grow it in a container and then have it somewhere close where you walk by every day. Um, so for me, I know I go outside every day and we have a patio. So if you have a patio, if you stay in an apartment and have like the rails, you could uh, grow it like that. But start with a container so that way you don't get so overwhelmed. Um, they have a lot of different containers out there on the market. The main thing you need to look for is making sure it's big enough and also making sure it has that drainage at the bottom. You definitely want those drainage holes. So after you have decided the one or two things that you want to grow, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to decide if you are going to grow them from seeds or if you're going to grow them from um, starts that they sell at your local garden center or your store. So decide how you're going to do that. And so after you have that, so if you see what we're doing is we, we're planning steps. We're planning steps so that we don't get overwhelmed and we're planning steps so that we can enjoy this gardening experience. So after you've decided what you're going to grow, I do suggest a container at first. At first, if you can, um, but if you want to do a raised bed, that's totally fine. You know, you can carve out the space for that and just making sure it gets enough sun according to what you're going to grow and you can still do that. But I find that when I offer doing it in a container, people can manage that a little bit more. But the only thing I'll suggest with the container is you have to make sure you're keeping an eye on making sure everything's watered because containers, you are going to have to water them a little bit more, especially when it gets hot because the soil cannot pull from the ground. You are the person that's going to be watering it. A lot of plants that are grown in the ground, the plants are so smart that they can start digging down, pulling that moisture up from the actual native soil or even the uh, raised bed soil, but your, your containers, you have to just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so we talked about just growing one to two things that we want to grow. How are we going to start them? And then the next thing I want us to do. Now, I'm you don't you don't have to dig. I don't want you to get information overload. I just want you to do a surface research, like go on the search engine and just look up a couple of sites the growing conditions for, and we're going to use strawberries today because a lot of people like strawberries. You can grow them in containers. Um, they're fun to watch grow. They're fun to eat, uh, fun for the kids if you have kids. And so they're, they're pretty easy to grow. The only thing I'll tell y'all is if you have a lot of birds around, you gotta, you may have to cover them with the bird netting, but all in all, strawberries is a great great way to get started and it's just a, a great feeling of accomplishment and especially when you can eat the fruit that you have grown because if I'm not mistaken I'm not sure I think strawberries are considered one of the dirty dirty dozens uh, that they say as far as when you um, buy it in the produce section but I'm not I'm not sure so um, now that we have what we are going to grow, just go and do a quick search about the growing conditions. Again, I don't want you to do information overload. I don't want you to like do a research paper. Just look at a couple of websites, know their growing conditions, um, know the things that they like, and just that way you'll know you are only going to focus on those one to two plants and what they like, what makes them happy. That's what we want to do. We just want to research Surface research, what makes them happy? Whatever you want to grow. If you want to grow some herbs, do they want part sun? Do they want sun? Different things like that. Do they um, require a lot of water, a lot of watering? Um, how long to is ready to harvest? So uh, hello, hello, um, Yankee sister. Thank you for joining us today. Um, but I just want you to do a surface research, just a surface research on whatever you're going to grow so that you know those growing conditions and you can be prepared for them. 
and especially if you're growing plants and herbs because there's some herbs that only want part sun or they're only they only want morning sun so you're going to just do a quick research so that you'll know if you're growing in a container where you're going to put that in your garden because some people think that container gardening is not gardening but let me be the first to tell you it is if you are growing something you are gardening so that is part of gardening you can do a combination of them all but i just want to offer an alternative and another thing and i know it's hard so i'm about to talk to myself too another thing is we we're on social media we're looking at videos and we look at other people gardens or what other people is growing and we want to do the same thing too but you have to do what you can do like you know how people just say do the best you can until you can do better like the way i see it is i don't know if those people i don't know how much time they have to devote so i can't can so what i'm saying is don't compare yourself to a lot of the beautiful pictures that you see online of people's gardens and what they're growing and you want to go grow out go out and grow it and then you have so many things that you want to grow and you start off growing them good but then for example down the gardening season you don't have enough time to devote to doing the garden maintenance now once you start gardening and you get you a routine that will be great but when you're just beginning that's why i always suggest just do one to two plants get to know those plants get to know what they like know their growing conditions so you can focus and master those plants and then when you feel a little bit more comfortable add you another plant or two but take into account your life what's going on in your life do you work do you have time to go out and pull weeds how often are you going to be able to go out and water or do you think maybe you should use um the drip irrigation like you have to take all of that into consideration and so that's why i say it, it, it is hard it's hard because i do it myself too and it's hard looking at others seeing what they're growing but you don't know their schedule you don't know the type of time that they have to devote so you can't compare yourself to others you're on your own gardening journey and what i can say about the gardening community is it's such a great community to ask questions and to learn about different things and just different um, different little tips and tricks that others may try that have worked in the past. And it's just a great community to be a part of. But I just wanted to share that with you because I know last season lots and lots of people got very frustrated with everything that was going on and then when they didn't have enough time or the plant didn't grow like it was supposed to, you have a lot of people that want to give up. And so that's why I said it all starts with your mindset because you're going to kill some plants. Um, I have a dead plant over here that I have to throw out that didn't make it. All the others did. I don't know what happened to it, but I'm not going to say I'm done. I'm done gardening. I, I can't do that because to me, I think of it like riding a bike. You just have to keep on and keep on until you are you feel comfortable with doing it and then it just becomes second nature to you. So really quick, let's just recap for all of you who joined us a little bit late. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you have not downloaded the free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden, go over to Instagram, click on the link because this is going to get you the foundations on what you need to even get gardening. This is another thing that you need to download so that you won't be frustrated when you have these foundations down about what it takes to even begin to garden, the things that you need to look at. Um, where are you going to, um, where are you going to garden at? Do you have trees around you? Is that blocking light? What are you going to grow? Um, how many hours of sunlight you need. Like all of those things is part of garden planning and you need to plan this out before you get started. 
So go and download the ebook. The link is in my bio. Also, if you want to receive notifications every time we go live, have a giveaway, have a special text, let's grow to 474747. It's let's grow, L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W to 474747. So before I get off, let me recap again some ways that you can start gardening without feeling overwhelmed. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to pick one to two plants this growing season that you want to grow. The way you figure that out, grow something that you like. If you like a certain herb to cook with, grow that herb this season. If you like a certain fruit, a certain vegetable, focus on one to two plants. Decide if you're going to start them from seeds or if you are going to buy the transplants or the starts at your garden center. Once you've done that, I suggest, especially if you are don't have a lot of space or you're just getting started, start in a container according to what the plant requires, okay? Place the, place the container somewhere where you can go out, check on it, nurture it, water it, feed it, but have it somewhere where you can just go out and do just like a daily, uh, a daily um, walkthrough. Thank you so much, Yankee Sister. She says the ebook is great information. I'm telling y'all, if these, when I first start gardening and I come from a family that loves to garden, like my grandmother, y'all, I'm telling you, I have been texting my uncle. One day I'm going to, uh, get some pictures and just put it on social media of her garden. But when you have those foundations, you do, you just don't get so frustrated because there are certain things that you need to plan for before you even start. So that way you're not wondering, well, why my plants are not looking good? Why they're not thriving? Um, they look like they're on the last leg. You have to take in a few pre you have to think about a few things before you even start that first plant. Um, and it has helped me. And, and no matter where I go, no matter where we've traveled, no matter how I garden, and it can be used for raised bed, native soil, container garden, those foundations can be used. Those are just, just some things that you need to think about before you even get started gardening. So again, once you have what you're going to grow, and just say, for instance, you're going to grow them in containers because you're going to start small. That's if you want to. Or you could do a raised bed. You, again, you have to think about your, you, what you have going on in your, in your life and how much time you're going to be able to devote to this. Because this is not a, I'm going to plant you in this container and I'll check on you about a month from now. And I hope you grow. You do, You can't do that. Like, I know I might walk outside too much and put my hand in the soil or, you know, go pull a few weeds and you don't have to go overboard, but I just like going, taking a walk through my garden again, just to take in the beauty, take in what a seed has sprouted up to be like it just, for some odd reason, it just amazes me, but you, you will have to, de you will have to devote a little bit of time into caring for what you are growing because when you devote that time in that plant is going to reward you i don't care if it's a flower a herb a fruit a vegetable when you give them a little bit of time it is going to reward you and when you get that feeling of accomplishment you're going to want to step it up you're going to want to step your game up and start growing more and you can because you're focusing on the one to two plants you have learned those plants, you've grown them, you've researched them, uh, uh, just the surface research, y'all, okay? Don't get information overload because sometimes we can look at so many things on the internet and one says do this, one says do that, one says don't do that, and, and you can just get information overload. So don't do that. Just get the basics of just get the basics of what you need to grow whatever plant that you're going to grow. Yes, the rewards it, you'll, you'll be rewarded. I'm telling you, the plant is going to reward you. So once you have that surface research, you have everything ready, you are ready to grow. 
and you're ready to grow because you're starting off small and you're not going to get overwhelmed. If you work, just carve out some time and say, you know, every other day I'm going to walk out, just make sure everything's going on good in the garden, um, pull a few weeds if they come up, you know, and then um, maybe I'll just, you know, just do a walk around, look under the leaves, just make sure everything's going good, you know, because me, I do daily, sometimes multiple daily walks because that's also a way to know what's going on so that if something starts to go left with your plant, then you will have a time frame, kind of like a time frame of, okay, well, I went out here the other day and it wasn't like that. So let's see, it had to happen between, you know, like you'll have a time frame in what's going on with your plant. That's another reason why you want to always check on your plants so that you can have a time gauge. If something does start happening, you'll you'll know when and you can start to uh, take matters into your hand and whatever it is, whether it's pests, you can start to control them because you don't want to wait until things get out of control because it'll be a little bit harder to get back up under control and you'll have to start spending more time in the garden. So let me know in the comments before we get off, let me know what, what are you going to grow this? What are you going to grow this season? I'm, I want to see y'all. <laughs> let me know what are you going to grow? We have been starting seeds inside and I'm just, I'm super excited. Um, we started some lemongrass. Um, we also started some, some more leafy greens. I cannot get enough of leafy greens. Um, we love collards, turnips, kale. Um, and then we also are going to do a little bit more seed starting today. I was running out of room on my um, planting rack. I ran out of a little bit of room but we did get another grow light in. So what the bottom row was all always used as storage, but I can take that bottom, uh, take that off and go ahead and hook up the last grow light so I can at least get a couple more plants on there. I just came in from checking on my baby seedlings in the garage greenhouse. What are you, what are you growing this season? Um, what type of seedlings do you have? So yeah, y'all let me know in the comments, both on YouTube and Instagram. Let me know what you plan on growing or if you've even started seeds. Like what have you started growing? And while everybody's typing it into the comments, for those of you who do not know exactly when to start their seeds because everybody's date is not the same. And I have been pushing this on Instagram and YouTube. We have a seed starting masterclass. I put some reviews up there. I am I am just so thankful that people have found this class helpful because that's another thing. Again, we go online and we see people, other people say, I'm starting my seeds this weekend or um, I'm growing this or I'm getting ready to do it, but they're in a whole nother zone, a whole nother zip code and you may think it's time for you to do it and it's not. So this masterclass is going to break it down step by step how you, you determine when you start your seeds based on your growing zone, based on your zip code. So no matter if someone says they're starting their seeds, you can be like, that's great, but I don't start my seeds until whatever date that you calculate according to the class, because everybody is, everybody's date is different. Okay. Yankee sister, carrots, radishes, collards, flowers, beets. She's on 6A. But yeah, everybody's date. Okay. So we have, I'm going to grow green beans. I love growing green beans. Yes. And pinto beans for the first time. Yes. Those are good. And Desi GT, carrots, watermelons, cantaloupe. I have to wait until next month to start seeds. Exactly. So when, when she sees that other people are starting seeds, she knows when she's supposed to start her seeds. And so that's what this masterclass teaches. Like everybody doesn't start at the same time. And there are things that you have to take into account. Even when you start your seeds, 
And depending on what you start growing them in, you still have to say in yourself, okay, it's still not time for me to plant them out. They're growing like crazy. So I think I'm going to have to pot them up, which is going to take more space. And you have to account for the additional space that you're going to need when you pot them up. Now, I will tell you between today and Monday, we are going to plant our, we're going to get started with our pepper seeds. It's now time, January 15th was my date to be able to start pepper seeds. And that's why I say this class is going to walk you through you, not me, not your friend, not anybody else, but it's going to tell you when you should start your seeds on your zip code, your growing zone. So the link to the Seed Starting Masterclass is in my bio. So if you're not sure and you want to know how to calculate this, and it doesn't matter if you move again, if you move to a different state, a different grow zone, the fundamentals are the same in calculating those dates, but everybody date is different. So when you pe see people say they're starting these seeds, that, that that's not an indicator that it's maybe time for you to start your seeds as well. So that's what we're breaking down in the seed starting masterclass, but you all are growing some amazing things. I am so excited. We're going to get our peppers started. I think I may have got too many pepper seeds. Um, but that's okay because I always plant about 25% more than what I need. And so if I have extra, I always, you know, either give them away or put them, um, put them up for sale um, online. So I know that even if I do plant a lot, they'll, they'll be gone because we actually like sold out last year. We had people asking us, was I going to start? Um, we sold the um, hibiscus plant the Sorrel um, for the tea. And we had people just asking us, well, we're going to start some more, but it was too late, you know, according to, you know, when they're supposed to start, how long it takes for them to, to start harvesting. So we missed the window. We sold out and it was too late, but um, we're definitely going to get that started in the next few weeks as well. So again, thank you all for your time. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that these tips we're able to help you so that you don't get overwhelmed when you start to garden. If you're beginning to garden or if you're thinking about garden or if you started garden but didn't have the results you want to, I hope that these alternatives can help you get on the right track and get you to growing and continue to expand and grow on your gardening journey. So you all be safe this weekend. Again, thank you so much. And we are going to talk again soon. I'm going to try to get a video on YouTube um, tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and film that and get that up if it's not uh, too windy, if, if the wind doesn't distort the sound. If not, I'll possibly do an over um, uh, voiceover. But again, thank you all for joining me. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Don't hesitate to DM me. Uh, reach out to me. And again, if you want to be on the text message list, text Let's Grow to 474747. So you all uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and stay safe. And we'll talk again soon. Bye, y'all.